All right, what's up, guys? Uh, back again. It's the amateur here with Escape Your Cubicle. Um, I got some bids on some of the items that I picked up at um, a, a warehouse clearance sale a couple days ago. So after the last video that I just posted, uh, I hit another sale over here in town, and they had a lot of different collectibles, old things. Um, I picked up this one uh, Tiger Woods collectible tin golf ball set. It wasn't sealed, but inside all of the golf balls and everything was there. It looked like those were sealed in little uh, smaller boxes. And then it said, um, you know, Tiger Woods 2000 on it. It had some of his scores from different days, different rounds that he played. And I looked on eBay and there were some... Um, some comps selling for about anywhere from 15 bucks all the way up to 40 bucks and so i picked that up for five bucks haven't even listed that one on ebay yet we'll see how it goes i picked up a whole um decent sized little plastic like grocery size bag full of brand new fishing gear fishing lures and stuff like that and that's what uh one of the items i have some bids on so far and um i picked up the whole bag for 20 bucks um, I think one of the lures by itself in there, I should be able to get 10 bucks for it. It's a bigger saltwater type lure. It's brand new. So we'll get half our money back on that one sale right there when that one sells. Uh, then I was at uh, Wally Mart and I saw in their clearance sections, they had a whole bunch of these little toys. I'm out driving right now, obviously. So I, I don't know. Um, it was like a little musical toy. And um, those things were regular retail price of about 20 bucks. Uh, they were on clearance for five bucks each. So I bought 12 of those for 60 bucks. So we'll try to sell those. Um, we'll try to at least um, double our money, net profit on those. Should be able to do that, no problem, since we picked them up for five and it looks like they're selling for anywhere from 17 to 20 on eBay. What else did I pick up? Um, shoot, I'm trying to remember. Da, da, da. What did I pick up from that sale? Can't remember right now. But um, I just dropped off an Uber rider and we're only a couple of miles from a um, Goodwill location over here. So what the heck, figure let's go run into the Goodwill real quick, just take a look around, see if we can spot anything worth picking up for sale in there. Thank you. 
Goodwill, that was kind of a bust. Didn't really see anything in there. Uh, it's worth taking a look once in a while, though. So you never know what will end up on the shelves in there. Um, I think the estate sale type things or uh, warehouse blowout clearance things where they're going out of business sometimes um, are good. But um, thrift shops can definitely be good. But uh, since I'm just getting back into this, I've got to uh, find out, look around, see where my uh, good picking spots are going to be to uh, get the deals. But right now we're on another separate mission um all right so totally separate unrelated topic what do you guys think about the whole um coronavirus now called covid19 outbreak what do you what do you think about this whole thing are you guys worried about it are you not worried about it um if you're not worried about it why my thing is i'm not necessarily worried about that virus coming to the United States and blowing up and getting out of control. But the thing that I'm possibly concerned about is this thing, if it gets so bad and it goes on for a, more of an extended period of time in China and in some other countries, think about it. Think about where everything is made. You know, everything is made in China these days. And a lot of these uh, workplaces and factories and whatnot, from what I understand, they're, you know, they're shut down right now. They're, they're on kind of um, a lockdown, right? Employees are having to work from home where it's possible. And I'm worried more about a possible interruption in the supply chain of just goods in general. And the other factor that um, you need to kind of be aware of and concerned of is if this thing even starts to get a little bit of a foothold over in the U.S. or whatever country you're in, right? People will start to go into a panic hoarding mentality. And we're, we're definitely not there yet, but you're seeing this in China big time already. You know, people are panicking and going to stores and the store shelves are being empty and there's nobody delivering the products to their stores. So the time to stock up is before one of these things starts to get a little bit out of control in your country. Because once it does, it's too late. Everybody else is already going out trying to stock up on basic supplies and necessities, you know, canned foods, uh, cup of noodle, toilet paper, um, paper towels, disinfectant sprays, anything that, that might be important to have, um, disposable, uh, you know, gloves, trash bags, anything that might be important to have in a disaster is going to go quickly at the stores. You're not gonna be able to get it. So that's the other mission I've been on lately is trying to go around to these, um, to my stores where I can get the uh, supplies that I need for cheap. Even without this thing going on, it's it doesn't hurt. It's good to be prepared. So I'm just gradually starting to uh, build up a little bit of a, of a stock of some you know necessities that I think it's important to have on hand. For any, you know, it could be an economic situation. It could be anything unexpected, right, guys? Earthquake, hurricane, wherever you guys live, there's some sort of disaster that usually might face your area regionally, if not worldwide. So stock up, man. Be safe. Just even do it a little bit at a time, a little bit each day, a little bit each week. You don't have to go out and spend 100 bucks or 200 bucks in one flow. You could spend five or 10 bucks every day just get a little bit. Every time I'm at the store, I'm grabbing two or three or four extra canned foods, right? A variety of stuff just to stock up, just to have something. Because right now, I, I in the past, I've had no food at Mission Control, my place. I've had no extra toilet paper, paper towels. No, I'm not, I'm not stocked up. So it's time to be prepared. Um, and this thing is, if anything, this thing is just like a reminder, you know, because you see what's going on in other countries and this could happen anywhere. So this type of thing could literally happen anywhere. So be prepared. Let's go into the Dollar Tree and see if I could um, score my toilet paper. Excuse me. 
All right, so yeah, we did score there, as you guys can see. Um, they had no issues. Maybe they got a shipment today. They had no issues. They had uh, plenty of stock on that uh, four pack of toilet paper. And like I said, that stuff is actually good. It's it's soft. Stuff is strong. It's double ply. It's not single ply, so it's uh, same as the name brand stuff. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. If it was junky, if it was no good, it wouldn't be worth it. And you get the you get the correct um, volume too. It's not like one of these little skimpy, tiny little uh, rolls of toilet paper, like a half roll. These are like full rolls. So we got ten rolls to start. But um, so all I'm going to say on that is uh, I think it's good to be prepared, start stocking up whatever you guys think. Uh, it's important to be stocked up on this stuff too. I'm gonna buy a bunch of um, hand sanitizer stuff because I expect in the event that something happens, people will be um, trying to buy a bunch of that stuff. And I know like certain places like Walmart and all that, they have a huge industrial size thing of it with a squirt thing on top like uh, 40 ounces of it or something like that. I don't know. It's like four bucks for a big 40 ounce thing of it. I think I go left here. Let's go left here. All right, yeah, so there we go. That place was busy, middle of the day. Not many people out on the roads, but um, even on the highway, the 215 highway that I take quite a bit, um, or Beltway, whatever you want to call it, it's just uh, sort of a mishmash day. I did a few Uber trips, I uh, did a little bit of uh, retail picking, sourcing, hunting, but at least we got an accomplishment there on the, um, on getting started with the, uh, Emergency supplies, emergency supplies with those 10 um, four packs of toilet paper. I'm gonna keep that going. My plan is maybe to buy five more of those four packs, maybe every other day, something like that, just to just to kind of build the stockpile. I mean, ideally, you wanna have somewhere between at least three to six months of living supplies, okay? Um, you know, it's great if you have some money to survive that long as well, but if not, at the very least, you don't have to run around with all the hordes of people and the crazy chaos if something does happen, trying to get supplies at the last minute. You know, you want to be already peace of mind, have most of that stuff already stocked up and safe in your home or your garage or whatever, storage unit. Um, 
somewhere where you have that stuff stocked up and it's safe. So I'm gonna go with toilet paper, canned food, bottled waters, big time too. Um, I mean, we're out here in the desert in Nevada. You never know when some disruption will happen in, in water supply, the water system, something goes bad. You just never know. So you wanna stock up on water as well. So those are the things I gotta focus on in terms of stocking up. The toilet paper, the water, the canned foods, and then a miscellaneous bunch of other stuff. So you guys prepping? I'm not talking about doomsday prepping, we're just talking about being prepared for whatever things that you can't expect, unexpected things that might disrupt the supply, you know, and cause people to go out and panic. Let me know if you guys are, are uh, prepared at all, or if you're gonna start stocking up, or if you're already stocking up, and are you stocking up because of the coronavirus thing, or have you already been doing it? I think it's smart to do, it doesn't hurt. You don't need to go crazy, you know, you don't need to have a million of everything. You just need to have, like I said, I think anywhere from three to six months worth to try to weather the storm, whatever kind of storm is going on, would be good. You know, if you can do more than that, great. If you can afford to, that's fine. But right now, I just got to do it a little bit at a time each day. All right, back to Uber. $15 or a $16 trip and they gave us a $5.12 tip on the app so that was nice thank you very much and so at $12.50 right now we're at um, $80 so that's pretty good I will take it alright guys that's going to be a wrap for me uh, we finished the day I'm going to tell you right now with $98 dollars that's not bad finish the day with 98 dollars for the uber day uh right now i'm going back to mission control i'm going to chill out for a little bit and then actually i'm going to check out that um golden knights hockey game but anyway thanks for watching everybody i appreciate it and um leave me some comments down below give me some thumbs up if you wouldn't mind and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber i will see you next time